Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today we are in Utah County at the Utah Valley Convention Center where all of the state's county commissioners and officials have gathered for a management conference. Amongst their uh, duties here were to listen to this fellow. Our guest today is Scott Johnson, who is a county administrator from Columbia County, Georgia. Gave a great presentation today about intergenerational management within the counties. Explain a little bit about your job and, and, and how you came to focus on the fact that you've got to get different groups of people with different life views working together. For, for us in Columbia County, we're a very progressive county in Georgia, and we're always looking for, for opportunities and ways to make ourselves better. Uh, I'm really into the whole idea of, of making our management better, making our county better, and uh, this is one of the topics that I really brought along with me as I was uh, going through uh, some of my education and some of my background, where I really thought this whole intergenerational thing had a place in local government, that if we could understand how we could get the right people in the right places, and if we could understand what made them different and then uh, capitalize on those differences and the assets that they brought along with them, uh, that we could have a better functioning county. I look at my own small organization, not anything near like a county, but uh, you know we've got a, a broad range of people, and I basically get up, I go to work every day, I sit down with all of my colleagues at work, and I just think they think the same that I do that they see the world the same way and you were spent an hour pointing out that they look at not only situationally but generally the world a very different way based on me being born in the mid 50s versus somebody born in the mid 80s um, what kind of how different does that outlook make on how they process and do their their jobs i think it's i think really that is the the sum of 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 what makes people what they are. It's your life experiences, it's history, it's the things that you grew up with. And every generation grew up under a different set of circumstances. And I think those, those sets of circumstances, when you really take a step back and you look at that, you'll see those sets of circumstances really made those people really act the way they act today, behave the way they behave today, manage the way they manage today, treat other people the way they treat them. Uh, it, it's all a result of their life experiences and all a result of of, of really history and what life really threw their way as they were growing up. So as, as you've kind of taken this into account, and a little bit later we want to dissect it and look at some of these things. So I think viewers and county officials across the state that didn't hear this presentation will find this intriguing. Um, but as you have recognized this and implemented it in Columbia County, have you seen a difference? Absolutely. I, you know, I think we probably have the strongest management team that we could have today. And it's all a result of recognizing that everybody's different. Uh, it's, it's really, we, we hear a lot of bad things about inclusion, but I think inclusion can be very well done. It can be very important to an organization if it's done right. And, and we've done that in Columbia County. We've, we've exposed it and we uh, have implemented it and we're using it. And together our team is, is stronger than ever. I have, to, I have to point out, just as a side note, you talked about, the, you, you confessed to being a Generation X. <laughs> and, as if it were a bad thing. <laughs> and, and, you, and you mentioned some of the highlights, one of which was watches, and I just noticed your watch. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, I fall right into the category. Right, right into the category. <laughs> we're going to take a, actually a break. This is a good pause because you're probably wondering what the heck I was just talking about. But I'm going to ask Scott when we return to actually highlight a little bit of the differences of, of what each of these generations are and then we'll look at how to go about implementing a guy that sees whose worldview is so different in a in a boomer or traditionalist versus a wire and, and how it all works together. So stay with us. We'll be right back with the county seat. We're reporting to you from the Utah Valley Convention Center. We'll be right back in just a minute. Remember those good old days? The places you went with your family when you were young. Reinvest in those old memories by making new ones. Beaver County is the perfect place to start that new tradition. Enjoy your favorite pastimes with family and friends. Connect with the history and culture of Utah in a place that's looking to the future. Modern conveniences minus the hustle and bustle of other locales. Beaver County, your adventure starts here.
What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. Planning your next conference or corporate event? The Davis Conference Center offers 70,000 square feet of flexible meeting and exhibit space, plus high-tech audio-visual services that will make your event a success. Whether you're planning a training, meeting, company retreat, wedding, or large convention, let the staff at the Davis Conference Center help you arrange your next event. Located east of I-15 in Layton, call 801-416-8888 or visit davisconferencecenter.com today. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking today with Scott Johnson, who's the county administrator of Columbia County in Georgia, which is not quite in this neck of the woods out here in Utah. But some of the things that he challenges as a county business manager really are pretty much the same. We've been talking about this whole new emerging concept of different generations of people and how it affects their work ethic and their outlook on life and how they function in their job and what their hot buttons are basically. So everybody at home is probably going, okay, well, I'm a Y, I'm an X, I was, I'm a boomer. How could we possibly be different? Why don't you explain some of those differences to us? Well, I'll tell you, you know, it's like I was explaining earlier, it's really just the sum of your life experiences. And we all grew up at different times. And as a result of growing up in those different times, it made us appreciate or not appreciate some things more. <clears throat> it made some people more resilient, uh, some groups more resilient than other groups. Uh, so you know, really, there, there are very distinct differences. And what's so interesting about this whole concept of generational management is how well the, the attributes fit really the broad generation. It's, we, anytime I do a presentation like this and I say, well, Gen Y is this, or Gen X is this, traditionalists act this way, there's no way that you can say that everybody that's born between a certain time period would act a certain way. But really in this case, when you start talking about attributes and how uh, just throwing things out there, people that are in that generation say, oh yeah, that's me. That's exactly right, he's describing me. And uh, it's really interesting how well that plays out. What are some of the traits of the traditionalists, those people that are Second World War and pre-war. Yeah, so these people grew up at a time where uh, some, of, some of the earlier ones were, were shaken off the, the end of the, the Depression. Uh, it was very important to have a job. They were very loyal to their organization, still very loyal to their organization. Uh, they saw our country go through a time of war, really the First and Second World Wars. Uh, as as these, these people were kids, they were growing up through that. Family was very important to them. Uh, having dinner every night was very important to them, and they have taken all those traits, all, all the things that they've learned and been exposed to, and they've really transcended that into their business life today, whether they work in local government or business or wherever the case may be. But in any case, a traditionalist is going to be somebody that's going to be very stable. They're going to be very loyal to their organization, uh, typically bring with them a great amount of knowledge uh, about what they're doing. They're very interested, uh, very service-oriented. Uh, and, and this really, really a hard working generation, and that's really the generation that, that formed this country into what it is. So you take the baby boomers, the next wave, of, right. of which this seat fills. Right. Um, what, are the, what are the traits that, that we bring to the workplace? So think about what was happening as the baby boomers were growing up. You think about the whole idea of the civil rights movement and how much acceptance there had to be and how much inclusion there had to be there. Uh, the whole idea of uh, uh, you know, Vietnam and, and a lot of our, we saw a lot of our, our parents and brothers and, and uncles you know, going off to war in a foreign land that wasn't fought the same way that the World War was fought. It really wasn't, the, the country wasn't involved in the war, much like the war effort of the traditionalists before them. Uh, so. Uh, and, and then the whole idea of, the, of you know, the, the Beatles coming into play and the change of the music and Woodstock and all those things. Really, it was a time of freedom. Uh, uh, think about the 50s and how neat the 50s must have been to grow up in and see. Seems like a lot of fun to me. Uh, and so the baby boomers really became the me generation. It was really all about all about them, all about uh, ex exploring yourself, figuring out who you were as an individual, but then being able to take that and to put it into your 
work environment. And that's what we see from baby boomers right now. Uh, they're very, um, they really care about the people they work with. Uh, they, they really uh, want to make sure that the job gets done and the organization does well. Never want to look bad. Uh, and those are some of the great things that they bring to the organizations that they work in. And in government, I see that all the time, uh, that, that our baby boomers are really the, the, the backbone. We've got the traditionalists that are maybe in the, in the more senior roles, but you're seeing the baby boomers really get to the point in their careers and in their lives where they're getting into senior and executive leadership. And the great thing about having them there is they care about the people in the organization. May not always express it, but they truly care about the people in the organization. And that really comes from their life of acceptance. Okay, now let's trade seats. Sure. You're an ex. I am. How do you, how, what, what traits do you bring to the workplace? You know, so Gen X is, is, again, when you think about how Gen X people grew up, and I'll give you my own life experiences, but as, as I grew up, uh, I grew up in a single family household, a single, a, a single parent household rather, uh, and my mother worked very, very hard to provide for the kids. Um, interest rates were highest that they've been in our country for a long time when I was a kid. Mom was working two and three jobs to try to make ends meet. Uh, so as the oldest sibling, I had a responsibility to take care of my brother and my sister. Uh, we saw the uh, invention or, or the, the heavy use of TV dinners. And it was a great thing because TV really kind of was my babysitter. That's what raised me, sitting in front of the TV learning those things. Uh, you know, it's funny, I can recite the preamble to the Constitution today, not because I learned it in school, because Schoolhouse Rock came on every Saturday morning. And I can do, I can still sing that song and recite the preamble. But there were so many things I learned from that. That's really where I got my education, um, despite my formal education, which, which I got later. But, you know, Gen Xers feel like they have a lot to prove. Um, they're, they're very independent. Uh, they were brought up that way. Again, they had to be that way from some of the tough things that, that happened during that generation. Uh, we really saw the decline of family and a lot of the decline of our nation uh, in, the, in the late 60s, early 70s, up until the, t till the uh, I guess probably to the very early 80s. Um, you know, we saw some terrible things happen with our, with our presidents and with an impeachment. And there were so many things that just happened in that generation. It made the Gen Xers almost have a chip on their shoulders, so to speak. And I hate to say that because that's, that's me, but it seems like we have something to prove. And I think giving that energy and harnessing that energy in the workplace or in government is a great thing because when you, give it, when you have a Gen Xer that has something to prove and you give them the opportunity to do it, they'll make you really proud. They are tomorrow's leaders. They're the guys that are just coming into the workforce. They're your junior executives right now. What traits do those guys bring to the table? You know, Gen Y, I think, is probably the, the best chance this nation has of turning around and, and just, and we're, we're a great nation now, but I just, the potential is unlimited with Gen Y, it really is. They bring such a, a techno savvy with them. You know, think about this generation. So these, these, these kids were born, um, you know, 2000, uh, 1980 to 2000. Uh, and when you think about the introduction of the first iPod, that was in 2001. So most of these kids have lived their entire life with technology. They know how to use it. And they're bringing that to the workplace. Um, they're also uh, uh, the type of generation because they were doted on as babies. Now think about this, Gen Y, most of the Gen Y people now are kids of baby boomers. And I talked about the baby boomers earlier and about how their, their sense of family was and, and how important it was for them to, to be inclusive and loving and all those things. Gen Y was the direct recipient of that. So now they've taken that generation, or this generation has taken those assets and those traits, and they're really giving it to everybody else. They love to work in teams. They love to work with other people. Uh, they love to work with technology. They're not very confrontational. Uh, and they're hard workers. I mean, they, you know, we, we think, I've, I've heard so many times, which is really an, an, art, an unarticulated assumption, that you know, this, this Gen Y, they're slackers. They, they don't work as hard as everybody else. That could be farther from the truth. Gen Y, given the opportunity, I think uh, really will do great things in government. Uh, uh, we use them a lot in our organization, and, and I'm not afraid to promote somebody because of their age. If I have a young guy or gal that's doing a, a great job and really knows what they're doing and can bring something to the organization, I don't let age hold me back. So if I've got somebody that's 25 that needs to be an executive director of something, they'll be at my organization. Great, good space for us to take a break. We're going to shift our focus and come back and talk about some of the applications now that we've kind of walked through some of those traits. If you're finding this interesting, pay attention. We'll be right back with the County Seal. There is a place where young and old make connections. 
where kids feel like grown-ups and grown-ups feel like kids. There is a place where beauty arises in contrast, where wonder is universal and laughter second nature. There is a place where friends find a future, families find each other, and feelings find their home. There is a place. Unlimited opportunity for adventure. It's all about knowing where to look. ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and wildlife events. The opportunities are limitless. Plan your stay and join us for the Utah High School Rodeo in Delta, Utah, May 16th and 17th, and the Old School Rock Crawl. Pick your adventure in Millard County. Canab. Base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Bryan Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit cedarcityayl.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic Southern Utah. Welcome back to the county seat. We're talking with Scott Johnson, a county administrator from the state of Georgia, the county of Columbia. Uh, we have been going through the process of talking about different generations. So we've covered the concept. We've talked about the fact that you've implemented it with some changes and we kind of get an idea of how people are. Let's talk about how you go about getting these generations to work together. You know, I think the biggest thing that you have to do is you have to understand the differences, and that's really what makes all this work. If, if as a senior leader in, in your role, in your organization, it's really important for you to understand what's important to all these different generations. And so many times we glaze over that, but it's, it's important for you to know that, that you know, the Gen Xers need a work-life balance, that the Gen Y people need recognition for what they're doing, that the, the traditionalists need to know that they're still valued and they're, they're not put out to pasture, so to speak. You know, so the biggest way to, to really make this thing work is understanding all the differences. And once I understand the differences, I can now start assigning tasks and putting people into, into roles and responsibilities that really fit their skill set based on where, the time they were born, which is really kind of interesting. If you were to define, um, uh, let's say your county's got a human resources personnel management position to fill, just pulling one out of the sure. hat, whose skill traits would you say uh, that job applies to? Who would you be looking for? On you know, that? what's interesting about that is, is, is it really depends on the person because it, Right off the bat, my initial thought would be I would probably put a boomer in that job because they're really, they, they care about people. They also care about the organization. They're going to get that done if I can find some, someone. My HR director is a baby boomer. Interesting that she reports directly to a Gen Xer. I'm sure she has a hard time with that. Uh, but we work together really, really well, and she does a great job in the HR side of it. But I can really see as time goes by the Gen Y people uh, that, that also uh, really understand the, the need for taking care of people and also the organization being able to, to move into that role. Uh, Gen Xers are going to be a little more task driven. They're probably not going to be as, as open to, the, to the, some of the HR functions uh, that, that um, maybe some of the other ones would be. But if I had to pick, I'd pick probably a boomer, which is what I have ironically. Okay, your county roads are in disrepair and you've, you've got to get on top of them and, and get the maintenance caught up. Uh, before you have a huge financial problem of roads. Right. Okay, and so you need a task force. Who are you going to put? I'm going to put a Gen Xer in there. I'm going to put a Gen Xer. Somebody's going to get that job done. They're going to go in there no matter what. Heads will roll. People will get out of the way. If I can get somebody that's very driven uh, as, as 
in, in that particular task. But the way I'm going to have to do that is I'm going to have to say, you know, not go do this, this, and this. What I'm going to have to say is our roads are in disrepair. We need them fixed. What do you think we need to do? How can you get these things done? And if you empower a Gen Xer, they'll get the job done for you every time. You have to give them a laundry list of the new, the, 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 the new equipment that they'll need to get it done. <laughs> well, not always, but I tell you, I think everybody appreciates all the new stuff. Uh, you know, to really, uh, uh, I think in any organization, they, they want the tools available. And that's another thing we miss a lot of times is we miss that giving everybody the right thing they need to get the job done. Okay, so let's play one more scenario sure. very quickly. You have, you're opening up a new division or a new department of county government and you don't exactly know where you're going with it. Let's say you've never been involved in uh, health care services, but now the county's going to be in that role. Who, who leads that team? You know, that, that's, that's really tough. So if it's something that, that is health care services, I would think that's probably a great place for a traditional. Somebody that's got a lot of wisdom, a lot of uh, um, experience in the field, and, and they're going to they're going to make sure that the task gets done. They're going to be very loyal. They will see the project through to the end every time. You, you look at the other side of that, where you get a Gen Y person that maybe comes in. Uh, is if I was going to put a team of people together to work on that project, I would probably have my Gen Y people put that team together and say, "Okay, this is what we're looking for. How do we make this thing work?" And you give it to that group of Gen Y folks, and they will surprise you with their ingenuity every single time. Great insights. We're going to come back for a little bit of a wrap-up right after this commercial break here on the County Seat. Color, it's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County, color, your experience. If you like the outdoors, there's not a better place to be. And like today for us, for instance, how many people did we run into? I mean, we really, you know, you, you've got this beautiful land pretty much to yourself and it, where do you want to go? You want to go there? Go there. You know, the, it's wide open. It's, it's amazing. Isn't it time you found the balance you've been looking for? You went to County, Utah. Welcome back to the county seat. We've been having a really great conversation about uh, intergenerational workforces and how you get everybody that, you know, the guy that's new and the guy that's been there for four decades, how you get them to see the world the same way. Uh, Scott, this has been a really great conversation and, and I'm sure that there are people out in the audience that are either city officials, county officials, have businesses within communities and they go, okay, this really makes a lot of sense. I want to follow up on it. Um, this obviously is a passion of yours. Where do they go to look? What, what, what do they do? Well, first and foremost, I would say that, you know, my job is a county administrator. And for the county commissioners out there, they will tell you that as a county administrator, I need to be worried about that <laughs> and not worried about doing this. Uh, but, th but that being said, uh, Columbia County, Georgia has a great website. I I'm really easy to find. I would love to talk to people more about this, really learn more from, from them as well. You know, if people have had other experiences as I continue to put this program together. Um, but there, there are so many resources out there now. Generational management is, is really, uh, 
uh, coming on strong lately. And I think it's something in government that we really should pay attention to. Uh, I think it will make our, our governments much more efficient. If you, if you had to list a couple of good titles out there on generational management, I mean, if I, if, if I get into the uh, card index at the library, which shows you how out of date I am as a boomer, um, and I go generational management, am I going to find titles? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you, you can you can search those. Uh, one is called Generations in the Workplace. It's a great book that's that's put together. Um, there's another one recently, Managing Four Generations in the Same Workforce. Uh, really, if you'll just stay away from the card catalog, Boomer, and get to your <laughs> iPhone and put it in Google, and you will have thousands and thousands of titles that'll pop right up. But I would say, ex you know, experience those, read those, get the background. It'll make you it'll make your organization a better place to work. People on the outside, as they look into Columbia County, have, have they seen the difference? I mean, the guy that comes in off the counter and goes to the treasurer's office, do they see a difference? I think they absolutely do. And I think that, that our citizens would tell you that. We, we pride ourselves in customer service. We pride ourselves in, in really having a common goal of serving our citizens in Columbia County, Georgia. And uh, to, to work in our organization, you have to buy into those concepts. So I hear people say all the time, you need to run your government like a business. Well, government and business are two different things. But you know what we do in Columbia County? We take the best of business and we implement those things into our government and the things we have to do as a government, we implement those things well, and then our citizens benefit as a result of it. So are, are Generation Xers the best one to execute this and get it started because you're not afraid to show people a door? I would say absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. If you need to turn an organization around, give it to a Gen X person. They'll get it turned around for you. Okay, very good. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting us into your homes. We uh, always strive to make sure that we have an interesting topic for you. Remember, as always, local government is where your life happens. Get involved in the process and become part of the solution. We'll look for you next week on the county seat. Remember that you can always check us out on our social media, Facebook, go to our webpage and share it with your friends. We'll see you next week on the county seat. I'm a Utah's own dairy producer. I care about the health of my animals and I care about the quality of food we produce. Because when it comes to providing quality dairy products, I understand the importance of Utah grown and raised. And the jobs we enjoy are vital because Utah's own supports our communities. As a consumer, I look for Utah's own products because Utah's own is good for me and it's good for Utah. Keep it lived here at home, Utah's own. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch The County Seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4 Utah.